Hello all, this is Sahana here with Epistasis. So, uh, according to Mendel's law of inheritance, when two contrasting characters are brought together, one of them dominated over the other in F1 generation. But the case of epistasis is different. Here, two independent non-allelic genes affect the same character of an individual in such a way that one overmarks the expression of the other. So, in simple words, epistasis can be defined as the prevention of expression of one gene by another non-allelic gene. This is the important word here. Okay, so here there are two important terminologies there to remember. The one is epistatic gene. So, this is the gene which prevents the expression of the other gene. These are the non-allelic genes. These are the epistatic gene. So, the one which gets suppressed is called the hypostatic gene. Now, when can epistasis occur? So, there are various uh, scenarios where uh, epistasis occur. Uh, the one is where the interaction happens between the gene from two or more loci and producing new phenotypes there. So, when two or more loci interact, the genes in the two or more loci interact with each other to create new phenotypes, that particular interaction is called as epistasis. And whenever an allele at one locus mask or modify the effects of the other allele at one or more other loci. Uh, so, this is like a, a single non-allelic gene can influence the alleles from different loci that uh, that can be one loci agarbodu two other loci it can be like it has positive effect or negative effect it can be like the influence cannot always be positive or always be negative it can actually mask the expression or it can modify the expression so, that is where epistasis can occur. So, that being said, epistasis should not be confused with dominance. What happens in dominance is uh, there, are, there is interaction happening between two alleles, two different alleles of the same gene, two different alleles of the same gene that is intraallelic. While what is happening in epistasis is the interaction is happening between two independent genes that is present in two different loci which are called non-alleles, okay? Now, first case of two non-allelic gene interaction to affect a single trait was discovered by William Bateson and Reginald Punnett in the year 1906. So, what they discovered is uh, an unexpected gene interaction were observed while crossing the flower color for for, while crossing this particular trait, flower color in Lathyrus odorata. This is the sweet pea. So, when they crossed true breeding purple flowered plant to a true breeding white color plant, the F1 generation hybrids all were purple flowered plants. And when these F1 generation hybrids were crossed or self-crossed together, the F2 generation produced purple and white flowered plants in 3 to 1 ratio which is a normal monohybrid ratio there. But when they cross two different white flowered plants, okay, these were of different ratios. When that was made, the F1 generation had all purple flowered plants and these purple flowered plants were self-crossed. The F2 hybrids, the F2 generation had two different types of phenotypes or two different types of flowered plants. One is purple and white in the ratio 9 is to 7. So, the F2 generation ratio that is 9 is to 7 ratio is a variation of normal uh, uh, dihybrid uh, F2 ratio that is 9 is to 3 is to 1. The classical uh, ratio whatever is there that is modified into 9 is to 7 here. Okay, so hence Bateson and Punit explained this particular 9 is to 7 result as uh, the involvement of two different genes in governing a particular character. A non-allelic genes are involved here. So, they actually uh, explained that. How exactly is? Let's consider the formation of purple pigment in which two different 
uh, genes are involved here. So in this particular pathway, this capital C actually uh, codes for the uh, dominant allele which produce purple and it is dominant over the small c which is recessive will produce uh, which in homozygous condition produces white colored flask. Uh, the same way these are the another set of genes present in the other loci where the dominant alleles are producing purple color here and the recessive allele in homozygous condition will produce white colored here. So in this uh, pathway a colorless precursor molecule must be acted upon by two enzyme okay so these two enzyme must be acted upon this colorless precursor to produce a purple color pigment that is anthocyanin so here gene c dominant gene c encodes a functional enzyme that is enzyme a which converts the colorless precursor into colorless intermediate here and again here the genotype p encodes for the functional enzyme enzyme b which gives the purple color or which produces the purple color pigment by converting this colorless intermediate so if any one of these genes either c and p any one of these genes is there in homozygous condition homozygous recessive condition then this purple color pigment will not appear so thus genotype c and c or p and p can hide or mask the expression of the capital c and capital p dominant characters or dominant alleles so this purple color appears only when dominant alleles of these both the genes capital c and top, uh, capital p dominant alleles whenever they are present only then the purple color can appear if these any one of these gene when they are producing together if any one of these p and c are homozygous then the color is not appearing so that is what we discussed here here the c is dominant whereas p is homozygous recessive here that is why the flowers produced were white color even in the same uh, even in, is it the same case in this particular flower also here it is homozygous recessive c allele and it is dominant so it cannot produce a purple color here whereas in f1 generation it had both the dominant genes here there is c capital and p capital hence both the enzymes are being produced here resulting in the occurrence of purple color so uh, since uh, small c homozygous uh, that is yeah homozygous recessive alleles of c and p are masking or modifying the effect of dominant uh, alleles c and p these can be called as epistatic genes now, uh, when epistasis is operative between two different loci that can be defined as bigenic, the number of phenotypes appearing in the offspring will be less than four. As we observed here, it is only two phenotypes are being absorbed, while in uh, the normal uh, dihybrid cross ratio was four. There were four uh, different phenotypes that is being produced in F2. But here what is happening is uh, only two phenotype phenotypes are being produced with the ratio 9 is to 7 so it is what this thing so these bigenic such bigenic epistasis interaction occurs there are several types of uh, ratios that is being uh, produced which is a modified ratios of mendelian ratios uh, it, it is always less than four phenotypes that is it can be like the most often or most frequently in, uh, encountered modified ratios are 9 is to 7, 12 is to 3 is to 1, 13 is to 3, 9 is to 4 is to 3, 9 is to 6 is to 1 and so on. There are uh, yet different type of uh, different ratios that is being produced by the epistasis. So uh, there are different types of epistasis as well. That is dominant epistasis is that recessive epistasis, duplicate dominant epistasis. There are many types of epistasis which we will be discussing in upcoming classes.